Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com. Welcome back to another sound design tutorial. Um, in this one, um, inside Ableton, we're going to be taking a look at um, multiband processing using Ableton's audio effect rack. Um, really, really powerful sound design technique. Um, the example we're going to be using um, in this tutorial is going to be on a kind of acid baseline, uh, but trust me, the techniques in this video um, can really be applied to any sound in any genre. Um, so if you're if you um, you know you're trying to improve your sound design, um, and Ableton is like your main door of choice, um, this video is going to be really useful to you. Um, so the first thing I'll do is just demonstrate the sound um, before the multiband processing, and then I'll demonstrate it after, um, um, basically showing off uh, what's going going on inside this audio effect rack and then what we're going to do is um, do all this audio effect rack from scratch so I can explain what's actually going on and um, so let's listen to the sound first before and then after <laughs> And now after. Before again. And after. So you can hear quite a dramatic change um, there, and the, like I said, the techniques, even if, like, I don't expect that many of you are like acid house producers or anything like that, um, but this is just a really cool way for me to show off multiband processing because this sound really covers a wide frequency range from the bass up right up to like the, the crunchy high end as well. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and start um, kind of recreating the audio effect right from scratch so I can explain what's actually going on here. Um, so the general idea, um, was something that I, I always find really annoying if I find like really good plugins for sound design, um, sometimes um, it can get quite annoying because you find a good plugin but it turns out it's not multiband. And what I, what I mean by that um, is that um, some plugins are great but it will process um, the sound as a whole across the whole frequency spectrum and it doesn't really let you specify what frequencies within the sound you actually want to um, kind of change um, and this 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 basically is going to show you how to um, implement the audio effect rack into any sound so that you can do that manually yourself so you can essentially almost turn any plugin into a multiband plugin which is really really powerful um, so what I'll do then, um, like I said, this is just going to be um, a duplicate of this before um, channel here, and then we're going to um, add the audio effect right ourselves. So again, I'll just demonstrate the sound. Really simple, um, and just in case you guys are interested in recreating the patch, I'll just go over it quickly. Uh, we've got a sub oscillator, minus two octaves down, um, it's going directly out. Um, we're using the acid waveform. Um, which is being modulated by a 4 bar LFO you can see here on the wavetable position. Um, this is the amplitude envelope, quite a short decay, a little bit of release, um, make sure it's monophonic. Also have an um, uh, envelope with a bit of a longer decay on the cutoff as well. Um, and then a third envelope which is just adding a little bit of noise to the start of the sound as well. Um, and then I've just got like a little bit of tube distortion um, and I think I did try some reverb but as you can see it switched off so you can just ignore that. Right, so let's go ahead and add our audio effects rack to get started with. Um, if we simply just drag and drop here, what this allows you to do um, when you click the chain list is actually chain together duplicate versions of the same sound. Um, and if you weren't to use like any EQ or anything like that, uh, or anything like that, it would literally just duplicate um, the same sound. But we're going to be a little bit more clever with it, um, and we're going to kind of split this sound into multiple. Uh, bands. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the highs for the sound. So what you can do is just straight away um, actually just add the EQ. So what we're going to do is use this EQ3 here and we're going to use three um, different versions of this to split the low, mids and highs into separate bands. So to start with, um, let's just uh, rename this. You can either right click and rename or control R. We're just going to call this highs for now. Um, and what's really cool, um, when, once you actually set all these up, you can control the levels of the individual um, frequency bands. So you can kind of EQ your sound from the actual audio effect, right, which is really cool. Um, what's also really cool in EQ3 is you can actually set um, a specific frequency for each band. So what we're going to do is set it to about 
um, 1000 hertz, um, something like that. Um, and basically this is going to be the frequency at which um, the high band transitions into the mid band um, of frequencies. And what, so if I, if I just solo this now, we'll actually only hear the highs of the sound. Which is really cool, just like the, although I mean I have, you know, reduced the frequency high down to about um, a thousand hertz. So, I mean, it is kind of cutting into the mids as well, but I just found it worked for the sound. So what you can really do is just customize um, the kind of frequency range of each band as well, which can be like really useful. Um, so the, in terms of what effects I actually added to this, um, I think I first added some isotope trash um, distortion. Don't worry if you don't have, um, you know, all the same plugins as me. Oops, I just put it on the wrong thing. One second. Um, don't wor worry if you don't have the exact same plugins. Um, like I said, this is just to kind of demonstrate the actual technique of using multiband uh, processing. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't necessarily have the same effects that I do. Um, so I think, I'm pretty sure I just slapped a um, preset onto this. It might be in a subtle one. Add muscle and brought the wet down a bit. And again, if I just solo this or listen to it, um, you can hear the effect that this has. Really nice bit of distortion just added to the high end there. Um, the other thing I'm also going to do is add um, some Echo Boy. Um, if I go up here, um, Echo Boy is a really, really nice um, delay plugin from Sound Toys. Um, it's possibly like my favorite um, delay plugin. Um, this, it's so versatile in terms of what you can do with it. Um, lots of like reverby type effects, chorusy type of uh, effects, and I like how they have all the presets, you know, um, kind of split into what you would typically use it on. Um, so the preset I used for this was just this chorus wide room, and I'll I'll just quickly show you this as well. Really, really cool. I'm pretty sure I brought the um, might have brought the dry wet down a little bit because that sounds a little bit too extreme. Really, really cool. Just adds a nice bit of width to the high end, um, and this is a really good example of why it's good to split the sound into different frequency bands. Is because you know typically you wouldn't add much of like a delay or a reverb or a chorus onto a bass sound because you'd be scared of um, the way that it would affect like the low end of the bass sound. Um, but with this, because we've split it into the highs, you can kind of go wild with this frequency band and not worry um, too much about how it's going to affect the low end of your sound, which is, you know, really, really powerful. Um, so what we can do now, now we've kind of got our basic highs set up, um, we can drag, um, you can either drag or just duplicate the chain. So if I duplicate this, um, you can see it's just duplicated. I can rename this to mids. And now what I can do is turn off the high, um, the high um, band there and just switch this mid band on. Um, and we can keep the frequencies at the exact same setting. So if we switch between these, um, the actual frequencies at which the bands start are, are exactly the same. Um, I'll just quickly delete those plugins. So now we can just solo the mids. We can switch between. Really, really powerful. Um, so now I'm going to add uh, a little bit of Decapitator, which is a really, really nice distortion plugin from Sound Toys as well. Um, really big fan of, of Sound Toys plugins. And now I can start to push the drive um, of this distortion. And what's really cool is it's only going to distort the mids of the sound. Um, it's not going to distort like the highs or the lows. So you can really kind of push this. <laughs> And it will, of course, add, um, when you add that this much distortion, it will add a little bit of, of high end, which might overlap with the highs. Um, that might be something you want to think about. So if you do push the effects like too extreme and it starts introducing new harmonics up the frequency spectrum, what you could actually think about doing would be duplicating this EQ at the start and putting it at the end of the chain as well to really keep everything within its own uh, bands. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to keep it as is. So now, uh, um, if I just play both of these together, so 
sounding really, really cool already. Um, so now we can add the layers again. I'll just duplicate this layer down, uh, delete decapitator, and go to our lower band here. And if I solo this, we're just getting uh, the lows. I'll rename this to lows. And, you know, in terms of um, effects, um, there's typically not as much you can do with the straight up low end. Um, one thing that I actually did was just add a compressor. So if I drag this on here, um, sometimes with with like some sounds, you can get a little bit of trouble with bass sounds being a little bit too dynamic and all over the place. So one thing I actually did um, on our after thing here um, was actually just add some uh, compression with quite a high ratio if I push this up uh, and bring the attack back a little bit with a little bit of release. Um, what we can start to do now is bring down the threshold and we'll get some like gain reduction to really keep the, the sub levels of the sound a little bit more consistent. And if I unsell this now. And again, if we just compare this with our original sound. It has ended up a little bit louder, so there is that difference, but you can definitely hear um, how you know how much of a difference this multiband processing um, actually makes. Um, so that pretty much covers it for the the technique. Obviously, um, the actual sound design in this video is relatively simple, um, nothing too complex really. But it's the actual technique of using multiband um, effects itself that's really useful and really versatile. Like you can apply this effect to so many things, like pad sounds, um, you know, like like in this video, bass sounds, leads. Um, you know, drums especially, you could get really intricate with your design of drums. And it's just something something to think about if ever, you know, you really want to kind of do some um, extreme, like say, bass um, processing, but you, you're worried about the low end becoming too muddy, or, you know, you want to add a little bit of reverb to, to a kick or something like that to kind of um, place it in the mix or place it a little bit further in, in the mix than you usually would, but you don't want to kind of mess up the low end. This, cause this is just a really, really powerful technique that's kind of worth checking out and um, what's really cool once you get to this point as well is you have really fine control um, over the f different frequency bands in the sound so you can start messing around with the gain here um, and kind of seeing what results that have so I can try that now so that makes it sound a little bit more hollow And now you have just like really fine control over the amount of bass as well, which is cool. Obviously, you could also just um, use an EQ as well. Um, and what's cool as well, you don't have to stop at like the EQ3. You could use the EQ8 and just get an insane amount of different frequency bands and get like really creative. Um, you could use this for like neuro bass design. There's just so many um, applications. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, if you're in Ableton use it, you got a lot of use out of this um, tutorial. I'm sorry I don't really use many other DAWs, so I'm not really sure um, how this would apply to other DAWs. Um, hopefully you could, like, figure out a way to do something similar. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you got a lot of use out of this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed, guys, um, definitely do ahead and um, do so. Um, like the video if you found it useful. Um, if you haven't checked my website yet over at synthhacker.com, definitely go check it out. I recently updated it and gave it um, you know, a massive overhaul um, with some new products on there as well. Um, so if you check that out, I really do appreciate it. Also, if you haven't done so already, um, go follow me on Twitter. Um, you can find me at Tom Synthhacker. Um, or you could just click the link in the description uh, down below as well. Um, so yeah, that's all from me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.